Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Cupid Parasite going to start our new route. We're going to start Ryuki's after story because that was according to the guide. I mean, again, we don't have to do it in this order, but I liked the concept of that a Tome kitten had like, you know, mo least to most revelations about certain side characters, you know, whatever. So, and Ryuki was recommended after Mernice, so that's what we're going to do. So anyway, there are three bonus endings in this route. Sweet and spicy end, a sweet end, and a spicy end. So I think that's for all of them. I think we already knew that. Uh, his bonus episodes unlock after finishing his sweet and spicy end. We're going to do the bonus episodes, I think, at the very end of the game. We'll go through and do all those. Um, kind of like if you've been around. We did for the Radiant Tail fan disc. We did, the side, we did those little side snippet stories like afterward. It was a little bit easier than trying to figure out which one's for which character. Because I don't know how it's arranged in this. If it's like, oh, here's Ryuki side stories. Or here's this. Or, you know, if they were just all kind of jumbled. Um, and then there was a... His last CG is from his bonus episode one, which is those ones. And then that's okay. So anyway, so we'll start. Ryuki, after drama, Ryuki. I'm growing up and I don't restrain myself. Oh. Use the same name. Yours. Damn, this shit's fancy. I'm so nervous. That day I decided to catch a flight from Lost York all the way to Japan. That explains. That, it's like, I'm like, are we in his house? Like, what? I, I, did we, I think we married everybody. I feel like I remember all of that, but vaguely. But this is beautiful. I was meeting Ryuki's parents to tell them about our wedding plans. Oh, we haven't gotten married. Maybe he just is. I swear we saw our wedding dress. Maybe he just designed it. Oh, he's still fabulous. But anyway, are you all right? I turned to see Ryuki sitting next to me with an anxious look on his face. You can relax and sit however you like. I bet sitting up straight is getting uncomfortable. I, mean, I can't quite get his voice right. We'll get there. He kind of just had the snotty voice because he was just a snotty little bitch, but... I still liked him. I feel like I still liked him. I don't think there was a character I didn't really... Even Gil, who wasn't my favorite, I still think he was okay because his route was insanity. And for the overprotective childhood best friend, I remember thinking they did at least the way he was overprotective. Less of, It bothered me less than it did in other games. Where I'm like, okay, that's fine. I feel like... He Because like, sometimes they do it and you're like, I'm going to fucking slap you. I'm not made out of goddamn paper mache. I'm not going to die because I took a breath. You know what I mean? But like, I feel like Gills was handled a little bit better where I'm like, yeah, okay. okay. He's not too bad. Not my favorite, but I didn't hate him. We'll see. I don't remember. But I don't remember. So I'm going into this with, I don't remember hating anybody. So cool. That works. You know? I thought they were all pretty... I remember loving Raul, so good, good for us. And Marinese is adorable. I love him to death, but he's new, so. But we got to kiss Owen. <laughs> I haven't forgotten that. Anyway. Huh? Oh, um, I'm fine. I mean, I am here to meet your parents, Ryuki. It's important that I sit properly. But my parents haven't arrived yet. He was right. We'd been waiting in this Japanese restaurant for about 15 minutes. My legs were about to give out, so I decided to take his advice and stretch them to get the blood circulating again. Ouch, that stings. Seeing me rub my feet, Ryuki let out a deep sigh. I'm sorry my parents are late. They message saying they're on their way. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm sure they're really busy. Well, yes, but I told them we came here formally to announce our engagement. They're always like this. They always arrive late at the worst possible time. Ryuki didn't look happy, probably reflecting on similar incidents from his past. Oh, he looks mad. Ryuki's mother was a world-renowned violinist and his father was a popular model. So it wasn't surprising that they were busy. From the sound of things, they were likely juggling work commitments too. I cannot wait to see his parents. Did we ever get to meet his grandma? I don't know if we ever had a sprite for her. I think she just had, like, lines. I don't have 
have anything planned after this, so I really don't mind waiting. But Ryuki kept checking his phone, growing more ir more irritable by the minute. Which is saying a lot, because he's kind of already irritable. Ryuki, I'm really okay. I understand it's hard to get them both free because of their busy schedules. Spacey. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to worry you. But I did invite you to Japan, so... No worries. I wanted to see where you grew up anyway. So really, please don't stress. Ryuki's mother was performing in Japan at the time as part of her world tour. Ryuki's father had joined his wife since he didn't have a photo shoot, making it a perfect opportunity to meet him too. Sure, but I rushed to finish my work too, since they only had today open for us to meet. Well, Ryuki has been incredibly busy lately. Ryuki achieved immense success after he designed Emma Winston's red carpet dress. His talent as a designer garnered attention, and he soon became known as and the mind behind the women's fashion brand k Inn plus Finn. <laughs> he received several fashion awards and quickly rose to stardom with his displays during Fashion Week. News spread about him, making his brand a headline in many magazines and articles. So it wasn't surprising that both his name and brands, Ryuki and k Inn plus Finn, became well-known in Lost York, too. It's R Yuki. R-Yuki. <laughs> Ryuki! I hope we can talk about Ryuki's success with his parents. Ugh, they really are late. I'm not sure what to do if we can't see them today. Ryuki was anxiously checking his phone again when the sliding door suddenly slammed open. That seems improper. I don't know who's saying, Ryuki, I'm here! Whoa! A woman burst into the room before I had a chance to compose myself. Mom? So she's Ryuki's mother. We're probably not getting sprites. Oh, Ma, you look so well. I'm delighted to see you. Hey, wait, you're messing up my hair. Oh, dear, you put on some happy weight. Look at this. Hey, the tickles. Stop. I haven't gained any weight either. Ryuki's mother was rubbing his head affectionately and poking his belly. She sounds fun. I like her. Following her, a tall man entered the room. I figured his parents were going to be very, like, stuck up and stuffy, because... <laughs> that sounds like it's going to come out wrong, because it wasn't his grandmother very much like that was... She was very, very, like, formal and very, like, stuffy. But maybe it was only with him. I don't remember how she turned out when we were like, oh, God, we're going to be engaged. And I, I think she might have been happy about it. But I think in the very beginning, doesn't she come up? She comes across very stern and angry. You know what I mean? And then, like, I think... Didn't he have a sister, too? But I, I thought there was a, like... It was always seemed like his grandmother was very stern and angry, but I think it was just because she was very strict with him or, like, trying to push him. But, like, I thought when we announced our engagement to her, maybe wasn't she, like... Didn't we get, like, a surprise? Like, she's like, yeah! And then you're like, whoa, grandma's acting normal. What the fuck? But I don't know, I for some reason was kind of remembering Grandma being kind of strict vibes, so thinking, oh, his parents would be very prim and proper, especially, like, you know, whatever. But then again, his dad's a model, so, like, maybe not like Raul, but a little more like Raul than Ry Ryuki, you know what I'm saying? Like, a little more chillaxed, so, I guess. Following her, a tall man, tall man entered the room. We already read that. Ryuki, good to see you, Will. Dad, come on, you two are so late. Hi, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry, Ryuki. I took a taxi as fast as I could, but the traffic was terrible. Oh, I'm sorry we kept you waiting after you came all this way to Japan. Enough already. Can you please stop messing with me? And just go and take a seat. With Ryuki's words, his parents took their seats across from us. He sounds more like the parent reprimanding late children. Hello, I'm Ryuki's mom. And I'm Ryuki's father. We're so glad to finally meet you. You're the girl Ryuki made that dress for and asked to marry, right? Nice to meet you. I'm happy to be here. My name is Spacey Mirror. Upon hearing their introduction, I quickly straightened up and respectfully bowed to them. Good for her. I believe this was the proper way to show respect in Japan, at least according to what I found on the internet. Hey, A plus for trying. Okay. Even if it's not perfect. 
I peeked up to check if I had done it correctly and saw Ryuki's mother looking at me with sparkling eyes. I don't think it's about the doing it 100% perfectly. It's the fact that you tried to understand the customs. You know what I mean? You know, you're like, I'm trying to do the custom right. And they're like, you just, you, you did a little research before you came. You know what I mean? You're so adorable. I never knew Ryuki was dating such a wonderful girl. M Mom. Oh, I'm sorry. By the way, you can relax. Huh? It's hard trying to be polite all the time, right? I'm not as formal as my mom, Norie, so feel free to be yourself. She's right. You don't have to strain yourself sitting like that. He's absolutely correct. I'm sorry. He struggles to sit with his leg tucked in as well, so you can sit however you like. His father nodded in agreement. I only just noticed he wasn't sitting with his legs folded under him. That is going to be fucking difficult, especially for white people. I'm just saying. That is, I can't sit like that. Like, that's why there is a hole under the table for your legs. They're like, if you can't sit like that, we got a hole for your legs. It's restaurants thinking. I apologize. I wanted to reserve a place with seats, but the food here is excellent and the rooms are private, so I thought it'd be better. Moreover, the orchestra I'm with is practicing nearby. Oh, am I talking too much? I love her. Yeah. Ryuki looked exhausted while his mother continued to smile brightly and his father quietly observed with a look of joy. <laughs> How did you come from these two? They seem like really happy people and you're so miserable. <laughs> they each had a distinct yet approachable personality, which reminded me a bit of my own parents. Moreover, it was quite a sight to see Ryuki so flustered. Did he meet your parents? Excuse me, your food is ready. A sliding door opened and a server brought in some drinks and lavish Japanese dishes. I don't think he'd have an accent like that, but whatever. From the right, steamed chicken and jellyfish with sesame paste, soy basted fried peppers, and stewed pumpkin and sweet fish with eggs. They look delicious. Kind of sound interesting. I'm intrigued. Though I was unfamiliar with most of it, I could tell by the presentation that the food was going to be good. Once the server left, Ryuki promptly placed his palms down on the tatami flooring. I followed suit and mimicked him, preparing for formal introductions when... All right, let's raise a toast! Huh? Oh, spacey, wasn't it? Are you okay with Japanese food? Y yes actually I love Japanese food. Yeah... I remember her eating natto, so I'm sure she'll enjoy this. You can eat natto? That's great! Well, let's get started. Congratulations on your engagement, Ryuki! You're like, even if you weren't, like, it's too late to ask now. But I'd be like, yeah, no, I like Japanese food, and I'm also willing to try different things. You know, like, I'm willing to try it. I might not have had any of these dishes before, but... Um, before that, could we go through the formalities first? Ryuki cleared his throat and looked straight at his parents. I... They're like, we don't, we're, okay. Are we getting a CG? Oh, how cute. We look absolutely fucking exhausted. I'm sure she's like bowing or whatever, but it literally looks like she's about to pass out. <laughs> Father, mother, let me do the introductions. This is the person I'm currently engaged to, Spacey Mirror. Sis introduced me to her at the marriage agency where she was my advisor. After I left, we had the opportunity to work together again. Through our work, I grew to appreciate her perspective and was touched by her kindness, which brought us together. I want her to be by my side for the rest of my life, in happiness and in trials alike. And this is why I will marry her. We came to Japan to formally announce our decision. With that, Ryuki bowed deeply. I followed his lead, bowing as low as he did. I think it's really cute, because it's like, the formalities, and they're like, yeah, 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 you don't have to, like, please allow me to marry this. They're like, you can do whatever you want, kiddo. Like, <laughs> they said I could relax, but these traditions held deep cultural significance. There was meaning in following them. I think it's cute that his parents are like, you don't have to do this, but okay. In fact, doing so made it sink in that we were really getting married. We had promised to marry each other, but a feeling I couldn't identify back then was now washing over me. Ryuki! Good for you, Ryuki. Ryuki. Indeed! Congratulations to both of you! I'm thrilled to see you two tying the knot! Thank you. 
Father, mother. Finally, I saw Ryuki's tension, which had been present ever since he arrived in Japan, start to dissipate. He's like all tense. It's like, you know your parents. You know your parents are coming here pretty chill. His face lit up, knowing he'd accomplished what he set out to do. Well then, let's resume the celebration of your marriage. Absolutely. Ryuki, you're 20 now, so you can drink, right? Yeah. Ryuki accepted the cup, blushing slightly. Well, cheers! And so we clinked our glasses together and dug into the Japanese meal. Mmm, this is delicious! Good, right? People from all around the world come here to dine. I sometimes come with my friends from the orchestra. I see, well, it's really good. I continued to use the chopsticks Ryuki had taught me to use as I savored the food. Ryuki's mother and sister sure are similar. Both his mother and sister were warm and friendly, showering Ryuki with affection. I also noticed that Ryuki shared his father's reserved eating manner and quiet nature. What? No, nothing. I couldn't help but smile seeing Ryuki and his father make the same expression simultaneously. I heard that Ryuki took after his grandmother, but now I was beginning to think he might be more like his father. By the way, have you two started planning your wedding? Huh? A wedding? I mean, you're having a wedding, right, Ryuki? Western style? Or perhaps Japanese? Will it be in Los York or Japan? Well, we haven't decided yet. Oh, really? Yes, really. We just recently agreed to get married. I apologize for getting ahead of myself. Since you designed that dress, I just assumed you had everything figured out. A wedding. I completely overlooked the wedding planning. Ryuki had only recently proposed, so I thought we had plenty of time, especially since Ryuki had just turned 20. But since we had agreed to get married, there was no reason not to start planning. I wonder what kind of wedding Ryuki would like. I glanced at him and saw he was deep in thought. Perhaps he was contemplating what kind of wedding we should have. I decided I'd ask him later when we were alone. Regardless of what kind of ceremony he wanted, I was certain we'd have a memorable wedding. Well, I'm sure. It could be Japanese or Western. Either way, I was sure Ryuki would look great. As the meal continued, we enjoyed our time with his parents. I remember the dress, but I don't know why. Oh, no, no, no. First couple's retreat. Sorry, Ryuki. Oh, look, we're getting all the CGs like in the bag. That's spoilery. I didn't notice that with Marinese, to be fair. Um, I remember a dress, but I thought that was a wedding dress. I guess we didn't marry all of them? Okay, I don't remember, but I thought I remembered, like, yeah, I remember, I remember a bunch of different, like, <gasps> we get to see the dress! So we had a wedding dress, he designed us a wedding dress, but we didn't get married. I don't really remember now, but I, because I remember, like, after in Marinese's run, we were like, right, didn't we marry somebody? And then it was like, wait... I remember at the end looking like we better get a wedding CG or whatever so I can see a dress. Because we were getting different dresses in all of them? I thought we got... And so I guess I was assuming it was all of them. I can't quite remember every single one, but... I know we married some of them, but... Maybe not everybody? Huh. Obviously not Ryuki. Oh, this is... What happened? Young Ryuki. Wow. So beautiful. Oh my, Ryuki. You're interested in the... Junihitoe kimono? Junihitoe kimono. Something like that. Anyway. Junihitoe. I think that's right. Anyway, close enough. It's a ceremonial kimono worn by brides at shrine weddings. How lucky. There's a wedding happening right now. That's the wedding? Yes, indeed. But I must admit, I'm not familiar with the rituals. So if you're interested, ask Grandma for more information. I'm sure she'd be delighted to explain. Okay. Juni oh, Junihito. I think that's right. I don't know. Anyway, a Japanese wedding. So beautiful. Oh, it's... Cupid, the name of the deity go governing love. This is the story of Cupid experiencing human love. It's also a tale that underscores the joy of spending time with the one you love. 
I have to spend time with the one I love all the time. That's you, bird. But right now your toes are digging into my chest and you're shoving yourself in my face and it's kind of annoying. I love you, though. Wow. A day had passed since meeting Ryuki's parents. I love, like, the little, like, neon backgrounds, the neon Japanese backgrounds they've done. I mean, because it, like, that's just the way this game is and lo the way Lost York is. But, like, so, of course, they'd continue it with the rest of the world in this universe. But, ow! That's not nice! You don't bite me for no reason! Joey's a nasty bird! He's a bad boy! And then you're just sitting there while I tap you on the beak and then you're like, pet me? You don't even... No no fucks given that you just jumped between my legs. Well, because I had my knees up. Jumped from one knee to the other and then I was sitting here with my controller in my hand and he was like, got all mad and tried to bite me. You're a big fat jerk. Anyway. Of course they'd continue the neon colors, but I just like it. It's pretty. Embracing the luxury of being in Japan, we decided to head down to... Asakushi? Asakushi, I don't think, is a real place. I was going to say Asakusa, and I was like, well, Tengoku's struggle is Asakusa, and I don't think that's right, so my brain kind of was like, wait. I don't know. It might be a real place that I've just never heard of. Hmm. And the stores around Asakushi have changed. I clicked that too fast, sorry. You used to come here often, Ryuki. Yeah, but it wasn't just Asakushi. And my grandmother believed I could learn a lot just by observing different fashion styles. I started traveling to cities across Japan. I would stroll through the streets, looking out for new styles. I was in Ginja the most. I learned a lot observing people making purchases there. Especially since there was a Keisai in... Keisai... Keisai in boutique. Wow, I can't say... Yeah, because wasn't... Oh, Keisai in was his grandmother's is his grandmother's brand right you can figure out the next fashion trend just by observing what people are wearing did i just double click that no okay you lived in japan until you moved to Los york right ryuki yep that's correct and the last time i observed cities like these i was about 14 years old he was always serious even as a kid being 14 years old suggested he was in high, high or middle school. So he'd been fascinated by fashion and studying it since then. Well, I haven't been in the human realm for long either. About six years ago, while I was still working as Cupid, I left Celestia and descended to the human realm. I came here after arguing with my stubborn dad, who believed there was no need for me to intervene in human love affairs. That was when I met him. Ryuki F... K oh, I wonder if... Because it's... Kaisai in Finn. If Finn is his middle name? Is that what the F is? Did we learn that? I don't remember, guys. Anyway, Ryuki F. Kaisai, my lover and the one who proposed to me. His sense of beauty was sharp, and he was known to ignore anyone who didn't meet his expectations of beauty. He also likes to speak in color codes. Like in hex charts. But now I was with him. That in itself was nothing short of a miracle. Eh, true. I remembered how he sprayed me with mist when we first met. <laughs> what the heck was that? I thought you could use a little moisturizing. Everyone should keep a bottle of hydrating mist on them at all times. That was when we first met. Ryuki was a problematic member of Cupid Corps, one of the Parasite Five. He only cared about people's appearances. He was considered a troublemaker because he wouldn't acknowledge anyone who didn't meet his beauty standards. Those assigned to him threw up, in, threw up their hands in frustration, earning him the nickname Glamour Parasite. Of course, he wouldn't so much as glance at anyone that didn't meet his standards, leading all the matchmaking parties to fail miserably. I became his advisor back then, and I tried my best to change his views. Actually, I tried finding someone for him without changing who he was. I arranged dating lessons and marriage seminars for him. But they all failed, and he soon withdrew from Cupid Corps. So much has happened. Strangely enough, I actually spent more time with Ryuki after he cancelled his membership. Instead of being his advisor, I spent my time with him as a friend, helping him with his work and sharing meals. Then one day, he finally confessed to me. He taught me what love truly is. Ryuki taught me, a former Cupid, everything about love. 
What? He blushed as he caught me staring at him. He was making an expression he never used to make when we first met. Ryuki was strict, both with himself and others, and always seemed to look down on everyone and everything. But now his expression had softened, and just seeing him like that brought a smile to my face. Oh, nothing. I was just thinking about how much you've changed since we first met, Ryuki. Huh? Really? I don't think I've changed that much. But you, on the other hand, you've become much cuter. Ryuki mumbled, blushing. Aw, he really is blushing. But actually, nothing about me had changed. The way Ryuki perceived things now made me seem cuter to him. He learned the meaning of love. <laughs> Thanks, Ryuki. Anyway, didn't you mention wanting to eat something specific in Japan? Ryuki changed the subject, subject, trying to mask his embarrassment, but his red ears gave him away. We are in Asakushi, so I'll go wherever you want to go. What I wanted to eat was... Oh, sweets with peanuts? Dumplings with whipped cream! Alright, well, this is our first choice. This is the kind of choice that last time led us to, like, the Owen ending. It's very weird how they do this. Okay, it's sweets with peanuts. Um... Oh, they both say sweet. But, okay, that's interesting, because maybe it's just... No, because I thought we had other choices inside Marinese's route, but we didn't... We only had one choice like this. So I'm curious, like, why all the other ones are normal pop-ups, and there's, like... I want to know what the rest of Ryuki's are. Are they going to be like this? So why was only Marinese... Why was there only one like this? Is it because Marinese was new, so they gave you normal choice boxes? As opposed to these fancy kind of ones? And the only reason there was this fancy one, because that's going to lead you down Owen? Because Owen was part of the original game? Or, if only some are scattered like this, why did they do that? Like, what was the thought process? Kind of, like, you know what I mean? So, anyway, sweets with peanuts it is. I know. I saw some sweets made with peanuts on Instagram. I heard they're made from rice. Ah, you're talking about Asakushi's famous... Ara Shinarashi? Ara... Shinarashi. Ara Shinarashi. That's a lot to say. That's a mouthful. Anyway, we can try that store over there. They have a, a variety of flavors. Oh! Oh! Let's go. I haven't been there since I was a kid, so I'm looking forward to it. I get it. Okay, that's interesting. So, I'm gonna... So that said spicy, darling, in case you weren't paying attention. It kind of like... So that choice... So if the other one would have been a sweet choice... This is interesting. This is sweets with peanuts. So I'm going to guess each choice because the best ending is sweet and spicy. So it's the balance. And then the other option would be getting all the more sweet. And then the other one. So I'm going to... Okay. Okay. I see. All right. So maybe because Marinese is different. He just had good and bad endings. Then these guys have different. That's why the cards are like this. But there was one in Marinese's route just because Owen was an original. But again, it's still interesting that Owen's... Well, but anyway. So let's see. Now, next time... Hmm. So we'll probably be balancing sweet and spicy choices. Okay. All right. Okay. Interesting. All right. Hmm. So good and crunchy. <laughs> it sure is, isn't it? That's how everyone reacts when they try it for the first time. With Spacey by my side, we walked through the, through Asakushi to the store. She's the same as always. Her curiosity, her vibrant personality, and everything about her was so endearing it made me smile. She was a hashtag DA536E and a C rank 55, but wasn't that the... Okay, ready, whip out your phones. I'm pretty sure that's the same color we had last time. It was like a pink color. And a C rank 55. So you're still saying C rank as in we're not that attractive. Because I still feel like that's like not pretty. 
5360. Five, was that... Was that the same one? I feel like it seems different, but... No, it's still that pinky color that I was thinking. That, like, rosy, corally kind of pink. So, no, it's the same color. Okay. They, picked, they kept the same color. I don't know why the hashtag doesn't seem familiar to me, but whatever. But the C-Rank... Like, oh, you're a C-Rank, you're not... But C-Rank 55... Sounds like I'm low class. Like, I'm lower. Like, you want an A-Rank, girl. So, I'm, like, only a C? I feel like you would have changed your opinion of me, but, like, I guess... No, I love you and I adore you and you're even more beautiful to me than that A-class girl, but you're still a C. I don't, that kind of hurts a little. Well, what are we expecting? And now she's brighter and more brilliant than anyone else in the world to me. The one I love is cuter than anyone else. It's so much so that I want to do everything to make her happy. See, it's, I mean, I like the sentiment. Like, she's only a C? Like, it's like you're ranking women from like one to, she's only a five. But, like, she's so much better to me than even a 10. I mean, yes, it's a compliment, but also an insult, and I'm not sure how I should feel about that. <laughs> if it wasn't for Spacey, I probably wouldn't be here now. I'd always viewed food merely as a means to maintain beauty and health. I hadn't thought of it any other way before. I believe my values, thoughts, and views of others would never change, and I had no intention of changing myself. But I changed because I met her. Because I fell in love with her. I had enrolled in Cupid Corps and she was my advisor back then. And to be honest, I didn't remember much about the moment we first met. I only saw her as a color. DA536E. She was just another person I'd pass by on the streets, leaving no lasting impression on me. I can't really, like, say that that's we You know what I mean? Because it's like, some people remember, oh my god, I remember the instant we met. And I'm like, I can't remember the first time I met certain people. Even if they're my close friend. You know what I mean? It's like, I remember certain interactions, but was that the first time we met? And other people are better at remembering that. And I'm sometimes not. You know what I mean? Like... So, like, sometimes I can remember the first time I meet people and sometimes I don't. And it has nothing to do with, oh, oh, my God, they're the love of my life. Like, you know what I mean? There's people I don't like that I have, like, shitty relationships with that turn out to be horrible people that I can remember when I first met them. And then there's the people that are, like, your besties that you're like, I don't really remember when we first met, to be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, so it's like, eh. So I can't really blame him for being like, I have no idea when we first, I don't really remember when I first met her. Like that interaction just went in and out my head. Yeah. Just another face in the crowd. I thought she was just like everyone else I'd interacted with before. And Ryuki's worse than me though. You know what I mean? Because he's a snob. And the things were different right from the start. Oh my God. We're flashing back on CGs now. I mean, we had that one CG, the first group one, but whatever. She was passionate and committed to finding me a suitable partner. And she wasn't upset when I said I was looking for a partner to apply the experience to my work, like what my grandmother and sister advised. She then suggested that I needed to take lessons, so she became my first date. She was also incredibly mindful at the shared house. Yeah, I do like how we're flash like we did the little flashbacks of the CGs, it's nice. And he gave us the mask, okay. My previous advisors would sigh when we talked and try to distance themselves. She was the only one who treated me like a regular person. And that's why my life began to change before I even realized what was happening. I learned the benefits of living with others, which I saw as something my grandmother and sister were trying to teach me. I assumed I didn't need to get married anymore. That was why I left Cupid Corps. Like... And here's us with our big boobs in his face. Even then, we met frequently. We exchanged contact information, and she would come and help me with my work. It didn't feel bad at all being with her. For the first time, I genuinely accepted someone's presence in my life outside of a business relationship. As I started spending more time with her, new ideas and ventures began to formulate in my mind. I think it was then that I wanted someone's opinion. I never really valued opinions other than mine and didn't care about anyone else's feedback. But for some reason, I wanted her input when I decided to embark on a new challenge. 
I can still vividly remember how thrilled I was when she showed up on the first day I opened my woman's fashion line. I didn't realize it at the time, but I know now, she gave me courage. Oh, and then look at how adorable and baby-faced he is after, like, now he's not being a little salty bitch, and he's just adorable. And it was around then that I discovered how comforted I felt with her by my side. I yearned for her company, to have her near me always. I couldn't comprehend why I felt so drawn to her. I was infatuated. And that feeling didn't dissipate. Instead, it intensified with each passing day. I even visited an optometrist thinking something was wrong with my eyes, since she looked even more adorable than before. Finally, the realization hit me. Yes, it was love. Aww. <laughs> she chuckled out of the blue, smiling as we walked side by side. I belatedly realized she'd been observing me. Shying away from her gaze, I struggled to remember what kind of expression I was making. What? No, oh, nothing. I was just reflecting on how much I enjoy being with you here in Japan, Ryuki. Whenever she was present, I strived to behave like an adult. I gave it my best shot, but I suspected it wasn't going well, since she just continued to tease me. She's pleased to be with me in Japan. It's so unfair when she says such heartfelt things. I didn't harbor any particular affection for my homeland, but I was delighted to hear she was fond of it. Trying to maintain my composure, I directed my gaze back to her. I see. That makes me happy. I... I'm also happy since I wanted to be here with you. Huh? Sorry, did you say something? N no nothing at all. We finished our snacks, disposed of the wrappers in a trash bin, and resumed our exploration of Asakushi. Asakushi, well... The surreal knowledge that I was in Japan with her underscored by the Japanese being spoken around us, was overwhelming. It's so different being here with her. I never anticipated that this place could be so energetic and lively. I was overjoyed at the opportunity to roam around Japan with her. By the way, is there another place you'd like to visit? Ryuki mumbled quietly, glancing away from me. I knew he wasn't angry. In fact, he was trying to conceal his blushing face. The once scornful Ryuki, who used to glare at others, was now shyly hiding his embarrassment. Overcome with joy, I gently grasped his hand. I do like the fact that, I mean, like, obviously, like, Ryuki's color is green, so that's why his text box is mostly green. But I do like the fact that the other colors that they blended with it, like, the underline and then, like, the blue and everything, kind of blend with his outfit so you've got like the navy blue which kind of ties with his hair and then the blue in his outfit you know and then like the tannish color also like they just they pick colors that just like i don't know if they did it for everybody but like i i just i loved how much fun they had with the color blocking on like okay gotta get the bird a break hold on as i'm as i'm speaking this hold on buddy hold on let me get up we got to be careful. Last time I got up to give you a break, I unplugged my microphone by accident. Um, you know what I mean? But I like, I love the, the way they did the colors. Like, thinking about it. But I feel like when I look at Ryuki and his color box, that they tried to find colors that just worked together, but also worked for his color palette, not just the green. You know what I mean? Did you go potties? Did you go? You better have gone, because if we go sit back down and you poopy on me, I'm going to be very mad. I didn't see you. I wasn't looking. Did you go? Did you go parties? Did you already go parties? We're standing here forever. I'm going to guess you went when I wasn't looking. I can't tell. I can't tell because your poopy pad's got some poopies on it. We got to clean that off. Did you go already? Did you better have gone poopies? If you don't go and you go poopies on me... Or you go poopies on my floor, or my pillows, your blankies. They're going to be beating me at you. Did you go poopies? You better have. Don't look at me like that. Don't give me those eyes. You know. I'll beat the bird. I'm not going to beat the bird. I tease you about beating you. I tell you I'm going to beat you. I beat you. Oh, I beat the bird. I'm not going to beat the birdie. I'll smother you with kisses. 
don't chew on the microphone. Nobody wants to hear you. That's not true, but you got to learn how to read lines, okay? All right. You better have no poopies. Don't make me disappointed. Because if you poopy on me while we're recording, I'm going to yell at you. I'm going to be like, who's a bad bird? And then I'm going to have to, and then everybody's going to hear me shame you. Don't be bad bird. You've been very good today. You were very naughty yesterday. Yesterday you were a very bad boy. But today you've been very good. Anyway, sorry. I could tell Ryuki was holding his breath. His ears grew redder by the second. <laughs> He's so adorable. Would he get mad if I said that to his face? Maybe, but say it anyway. I was certain he'd get upset. Perhaps even sulk. I stole a glance at Ryuki's face. Is there anywhere you'd recommend or want to visit Ryuki? Somewhere I want to go. Yeah, I mean, since we're here, I'd like to know your favorite spots. And places I like. Ryuki frowned slightly, then scanned the surrounding area. Well, since we're here, I'd like to show you a place that's unique to Japan. Ryuki began to walk and pull out his smartphone to check something. He's not choosing where he wants to go, but where he wants to take me. Huh. I followed, thrilled that Ryuki was considering my enjoyment. Just as we rounded a corner, Ryuki halted abruptly. Uh... Huh? Is there an issue? Um, well... It seemed he found something intriguing. I followed his gaze to a sign featuring an adorable dog with the name... Mama Shiba? Mame Ishiba. Mame Ishiba? Mame Ishiba? Mame Ishiba? There are unique dog and cat, cat, cat cafes spread across Japan. Many travelers recommended them, so I thought we could check one out, but... His eyes were fixed on the sign. Perhaps it was just my perception, but it seemed Ryuki was eager to go there. Well, Ryuki does adore Kagura. Well, that's true. He has a dog, all right. He had a large, charming Saluki named Kagura. She was staying at a luxurious pet hotel. <laughs> Why not? Let's check it out. Uh, okay, let's go. Ryuki nodded with a smile on his face. With that, we made our way to the Mameshiba Cafe. Ma me Shiba Cafe. Mameshiba. We pushed open the door and stepped inside. Do we get to see... Oh my god. That's what I was just going to ask. Are we going to get to see adorable fucking puppies? Yes, here you go. Here's your sprite. Oh, your sprite. Here's your CG of adorable puppies. All I'm saying is, if this counts as a Ryuki CG, there better be one of him surrounded in a dog pile. Okay. <laughs> Suddenly, Ryuki was enveloped by a swarm of mini Shibas. So many dogs were swarming him that even the staff seemed surprised. Whoa! <laughs> that tickles. <laughs> They're so cute! I smiled as I watched the fluffy dogs. Ryuki was too occupied with the dogs to relax. Yeah, they're adorable, but why are they all... <laughs> hey, take it easy. One of the mini Shibas suddenly clambered up to lick Ryuki's cheek. Okay, I get it. I'll pet each one of you, just... Good to know, and thank you. You're all good. That tickles. <laughs> They're listening to Ryuki. I guess the mini Shibas could sense that he was a dog lover. Watching Ryuki frolicking with the mini Shibas reminded me of a certain fluffy creature that only I could see. Chi, the divine beast that accompanied me from Celestia. I hope Chi's doing okay. I lost the ability to see Chi after sharing a kiss with Ryuki on December 31st. My Cupid's arrow necklace disappeared, but when I reached out to my aunt, she confirmed it had returned to Celestia. Essentially, after falling in love and sharing a genuine kiss, I had lost my Cupid's status and become fully human. I assume that also caused me to lose my ability to see Chi. It was somewhat sad that I could no longer hear Chi's chirping voice and electrical buzzing. Then again, Chi and Kagura were always at odds, so I guess Chi would have moved on regardless of my relationship with Ryuki. Kagura always reacted as if Chi was completely visible. Maybe animals possessed a natural sixth sense that allowed them to perceive divine beasts. As I continued contemplating the now-absent Chi... 
One of the many Shivas waddled over to me. Woof! Wow, so adorable! The serene mini Shiba gently settled into my lap. Woof! <laughs> Try to sniff like a dog. I relaxed, gently petting the mini Shiba. As for Ryuki, he was still enjoying his mini Shiba entourage. Like, I didn't really think this was going to be the... I mean, we have to make the chi noises. Now we got a bark. I mean, uh, I'm in Tengoku's struggle, we got a meow. I'm not sure if that's still going on when this is... Ha I don't know where we are with which, which one. But like, good lord, I didn't think I'd be making so many fucking animal noises. <laughs> hey, quit. <laughs> I don't have any more treats. Look, I'm not hiding anything, see? Nothing in my hands. He was completely immersed in playing with the mini Shibas. <laughs> Ryuki sure is having fun. Ryuki protested against the tickling sensation, but his smile showed he was enjoying the moment. His fluffy friends didn't let up until we, fin we finally left the cafe. The staff and the other customers looked at Ryuki with envy. Ooh, this is swanky. Is this our hotel? After an enjoyable day at the Mini Shiba Cafe, we returned to our traditional Japanese inn in, in Asakushi. Phew. Exhausted from our outing and full from dinner, all we wanted to do was shower and get some rest. All that walking was tiring. I lay down on the bed and Ryuki came quickly after. Are you tired? A little. Those mini Shibas sure were cute. I didn't expect them to climb all over me, though. Despite his words, the amused smile on his face made it clear that he'd enjoyed the experience. Uh-oh. We're like alone at an... Oh, dear God, am I going to have to read some inappropriate shit this early in the game? Then, unexpectedly, he reached out, pulled me close, and kissed me. But I'd prefer you to be all over me instead. Oh, okay. Well, are we getting a little... We're definitely... I... Oh, okay. Ryuki. As I looked up at him, his lips met mine gently. Oh, I'm not moaning. Uh, a kiss. I was so focused on meeting Ryuki's parents during the trip that I didn't realize he hadn't held me like this yet. In other words, this was our first kiss on our trip. I blushed at the reminder that we were really lovers. We both blushed. The newness of the situation was making us feel awkward. We confessed our feelings to his parents and officially became an engaged couple. But our relationship was still quite fresh. What do you mean by quite fresh? Like you've made out and stuff, but you've never boned each other? Or like it's just a new relationship, so you're still in that giggly honeymoon phase? Our unfamiliarity with such closeness led us to pull apart slightly after the tender kiss. That kind of sounds like you haven't boned each other yet. Oh dear. But Ryuki's gaze stayed locked on me, his eyes soft and loving, despite his embarrassment. Oh, um, yes? Yesterday we were so tired we went straight to bed. I didn't get to the chance to say this, but thank you for agreeing to meet my parents. I wanted to let them know that I'm marrying you and I'm happy you're here with me. His heartfelt words prompted me to smile Matching his own radiant expression. The least you could do is have given us a CG of this radiant expression. Also, we don't... It's just a background. We don't even have any sprites. What's the deal with that? Why are there no sprites? No, Ryuki. Thank you for bringing me here. I rested my head on his chest and hugged him tightly. It's like... I... D I'm kind of confused why there's no sprites. His heart pounded rhythmically against my ear... It's pace quickening with every passing second. It's one thing if they don't show her, like, little sprite. That's fine, but, like, why is there no Ryuki sprite this whole time? It's really bizarre. So, um... Ryuki turned to me, his hand landing softly on my shoulder. Oh? Despite his face going crimson, he held my gaze, though his eyes shifted before he spoke. Oh. Oh, does he not know? Did we not tell him? I wanted us to meet your parents, too, to tell them we're getting married. And they live in Lost York, right? My parents? Yeah, we already told my parents, so I figured it's only right to see yours. My parents. My parents. Memories of Mars and Venus and Celestia rushed into my mind, and I froze for a moment. 
As the former Cupid, my parents were actual gods, beings far beyond mortal comprehension, and he doesn't know we were Cupid. Ryuki seemed puzzled by my reaction. They don't stay in one place, do they? Like my mother. You mentioned once that your mother is a magician, right? Oh, shoot, that's right! I told him that my mom was a magician! Woo! The day Ryuki met my mother came back to me. Back then she had a habit of changing her appearance for the human realm, then teleporting back to Celestia whenever she wanted. Not wanting to reveal her true divine nature, I had described her as a magician to explain her abrupt disappearing acts. I don't remember that, but it's cheesy as fuck. Ryuki had latched onto that explanation and still believed my mom was a was genuinely a magician. Am I remembering this incorrectly? No, you've got it right. Yeah, she's a magician and, um, she does tend to vanish a lot. She's usually all over the place, so I'm not certain when or how we'll be able to meet up with her. I see. I might be wrong, but it feels like you're uncomfortable with me meeting your parents. Huh? Oh, it, it's not that at all. My parents are just... unique. They're very unpredictable. I'll send a message to them later, but that aside, what's our plan for tomorrow? Huh? Our flight leaves tomorrow afternoon, right? Maybe we could go shopping before we leave. Hoping to divert the conversation away from my divine parents, I quickly changed the topic. My parents were gods. That was unfathomable to humans. I didn't even know if my parents understood the concepts of introducing a fiancé. Even as we chatted about our plans for tomorrow, something felt off. It was as though she was deliberately skirting around the topic of her parents. Maybe now wasn't the time to talk about her parents. I recalled her odd reactions when I'd met her mother. Perhaps that strange experience was why she hesitated to introduce me to them. But my own mother and sister were far from ordinary, too. Her mother couldn't be that peculiar. I believe it's necessary for me to formally introduce myself to her parents. Yet a sudden doubt crept into my mind. Is there something wrong with me? Perhaps she didn't believe I was worthy of meeting her parents. You had to know this was where this was going to go. Oh, what? No, my parents. And he's going to be like, you don't want me to meet your parents. I just don't know. I don't. It's not that I don't want my parents to meet you. I don't want you to meet them. Wait, they're the weirdos. I just don't want to scare you away. You know, it's not you. It's them. But you had to know it's Ryuki and he was going to think this. Also based on the way they kind of wrote the previous, you know, anyway. Or maybe she thought I wasn't reliable enough yet. Especially considering she was older than me. Unable to suppress my frustration, I held her arm tightly. I crawled on top of her and pulled her into a firm embrace. Okay, sir. Ryuki, what's the matter? I crawled on top of her. Okay. A wave of insecurity washed over me as I looked at her. Are you gonna insecure fuck me? Because, like, whatevs, if that's what it takes. We shared... Oh, God, I wouldn't know why I was reading this as me. We shared the same room in the same bed, but her relaxed demeanor showed a lack of concern. She went to sleep before I could articulate my feelings the night before, and I was determined not to let that happen again. Our kiss, though it had left both of us flustered, seemed to haunt me more than her. I appreciated her trust in me, but was simultaneously frustrated by her apparent lack of interest. He's like, we kissed, and I feel a little flustered, and you got over it. I want you to feel a little bit, like, whatever, and you just... Are you not turned on by that kid? Oh, sweetie, sweetie, you're gonna have to work a little harder. Does she not see me as a man? He's so insecure! Well, it wasn't like we hadn't done it yet. Okay, so we've had sex with him. All right, there goes that. I don't know what happened in the first game. I know we fucked Raul pretty much, like, five minutes into meeting him. We were like, what? He was like, yeah, you know, casual sex. And we were like, all right, why not? And then she just, we just fucked him. Holy shit. I can appreciate the game for that. Cause it's like, um, hello. What? We're always, oh my God. No, he looked at me. Oh, whatever. You know, but, uh, you know, I don't remember if it came up in other routes that things happened. I don't remember what happened or what didn't, you know, and the day when I proposed upon to her upon turning 20, was the first time I'd held her as a man. But reflecting on it, I realized I'd been so focused that I wasn't sure if I'd done everything right. He's so adorable! 
And now that I have the opportunity, I want to show her the man that I am. My mind was a whirlwind of emotions, but the combination of frustration and her irresistible charm was too potent to resist. I needed her to see me as a man. Spacey, can I... At my words, she blushed, a touch of confusion in her eyes. I like how he said, can I? Fuck you. Sir, not can I, it's can we. Can we, can we have sex now? Um, Ryuki, yes, of course, but if you're good, then I'm good. Do we get at least a CG? Oh, hell we go. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Look at that. We got some matchy robes, and we got, okay. You know, we got some thigh going on. We got a little bit of man cleavage. Kind of need you to get a little sluttier, though, sir, but, you know, still nice, still nice. The hand intertwined in our hair. All right. I kissed her before she could utter another word, pulling her ponytail free and letting her hair cascade down. Her locks spread across the bed sheets, and the scent of, her, of the hair treatment I'd given her wafted around us. It reminded me of the mini bottles of shampoo and conditioner I packed for our trip. So she used the ones I gave her instead of the hotel's amenities. Those items were meant for her, but the feminine aroma they produced made my heart race. Wait, Ryuki! No. I remember, I said I wouldn't hold back now that I'm 20. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but that's just so cute and adorable. I turned 20 and now... now uh, that's it! We're t I'm not holding back anymore. It's just so fucking ridiculous and absurd and cute. You just go with the flow. I had to assert that to cement my resolve. I kissed her neck gently, trying to hold on to my sanity. Ryuki, I... I... Why are you so cute? It's not fair when you're looking at me like this. Everything about her was endearing. Her blush, soft whispers slipping from her lips. I hadn't realized I had it in me to feel this way. And now that I did, there was no going back. It's going to be the whole fucking game, isn't it? It's just going to be me having to read, like, listen, me going, yeah, come on, we better get some, and then I have to read it, and I'm like, why do I do this to myself? This is going to be awkward. The whole game is just going to be awkward as fuck. I already know what to expect from Jupiter's Realm. I saw that warning, and oh, dear God, I'm dreading it. Oh, dear Lord. Don't worry. I'll leave everything to me tonight. My boldness crumbled as I looked into the depths of her beautiful eyes. I knew I would be hopelessly lost in them tonight. The wedding I want. Next chapter. Wow, we hit the first... Okay. Hmm. I slowly awoke the next morning to the sun's rays slipping into the room. An unfamiliar ceiling greeted me. Confusion clouded my mind until I remembered where I was. I was with Ryuki, and we'd spent the night at the Japanese Inn. With the memories from last night rushing back, I blushed and covered my cheeks with my hands. Girl, I'm gonna need you to get over it. Unless he did some interesting new tricks, and you're like, Oh my god, where'd you learn that? Okay, but other words, it's not your first time. Let's, st let's stop. That's right. Yesterday we... It hadn't been our first time, but I wasn't sure if I could interact with Ryuki as casually as before. Why? Okay, listen. That's gonna drive me fucking bonkers. If he did some weird circus-level act shit, Cirque du Soleil shit he brought into the bedroom with a sex swing or whatever, and you're like, this is awkward and weird and some weird shit happened. I understand that, but just like, oh my god, we had sex and now I can't look at... Well, it wasn't your first time, then don't act like this. There is nothing that pisses me off more in games than when it's like, oh my god, he looked at me and I know he touched me, but like, oh my god, I'm so embarrassed and I can't look at him because I'm a dainty little wallflower and like, you're married and have three kids. Like, after, like the first time, like, I get it being like, oh, okay, I feel a little awkward. And like, okay, I get it. But you didn't even act like this in Marinese's round. That was the first time you boned him. Okay, you act a little awkward, but then get over it. Like, it's like, oh, I could feel the heat rushing to me thinking about what he did, and I felt a little embarrassed, like, imagining that in the daytime. Like, okay, you know, I get it, but, like, let's not, let's not do this where it's like, oh, my God, I'm a timid, dainty wallflower. Like, I hate it. Oh, my God. I know I'm judging it too soon, but it just drives me crazy. Just drives me fucking crazy. Like, you know? The first time you sleep is, sure, awkward, it's going to be awkward, but 
If you're stressing that it's not the first time, then don't act like it's so fucking awkward and weird. Like, that's not... Oh, it's so annoying. I hate it. I hate it. I've never seen Ryuki like that before. Last night was far more sensual and intense than our first time. Okay, was this only the second time? Because then, okay. It's like, it's not like our first... It's really... Then I get it. It's still new. And, like, I can also get the, like... Oh my god, he was so much sensual and intense and like, holy shit, what the hell was that? Like, again, he's trying some new shit. Okay. Then I get the slight, like, awkwardness. But, like, let's not make this a thing where every time they have sex, she gets, like, he kissed me and I'm so awkward. Stop it. Stop it. Hike your tits up and be a real woman, okay? Right? It's only awkward when he does some weird shit. And you're like, how did you learn that? Where did that come from? You know, I'm just going to throw it out there. We've seen the warning about some uh, bestiality shit going on. And I'm going to bet there's not going to be this. Oh, my God, that was so awkward and whatever. When that was where you should get the awkward feelings. You should feel awkward about that because I feel awkward about that. And I haven't even read it yet. And I'm only imagining it. Okay, if you're going to be all oh, dainty little wallflower about having normal sex, then I want some fucking serious shame about what the hell's going to go down there, okay? That's all I'm saying. But I guarantee you it's not going to be like this. And I'm going to be like, seriously, this is where you should be sitting in your shame corner wondering what the fuck is wrong with you and what kind of a degenerate are you, okay? This is coming from the woman who is like, is it my brother? Can I bang him? And I'm just saying you should be ashamed of what you're going to make me read. Kind of traumatized already. <laughs> I'm more concerned that I'm going to be like, no, that was kind of awesome. I'm, I'm just more concerned that I might enjoy it. Because that, then I, that's something I didn't know about myself and I'm, and I'm concerned and I'm afraid and I don't want to open those doors, okay? Oh, good Lord. Perhaps that was why it felt so new to me, even though we'd shared intimate moments before. Okay, okay again, that I can understand. Oh my God, like, whoo, he did some new shit. So looking at him in a new light. Okay, but, but say that first before you get into the awkward, you know? I know I shouldn't judge it before I read completely, but ugh. The memory alone made my heart pound. That's okay, acceptable. Mm, ugh. What is it? Now we get shirtless Ryuki. Look at that. Don't look at him. Don't look at him naked. <laughs> at least they kept him naked, sort of, you know. They're giving us fan service, so we're going to be seeing a lot of chesty. Well, we saw it in the first game. They all stripped their clothes off to compare bodies. So, not surprising. Ryuki mumbled, stirring from his sleep. Uh, I'm sorry, did I wake you? Yes, but it's all right. Despite his words, it looked like he was half asleep. He grimaced with, oh, he graced me with a sleepy smile and a warm hug. Yeah, he was definitely still sleepy. So warm. He chuckled and gently stroked my head as if I were a child. I thought he might have been mistaking me for Kagura. As I savored his warmth, I was unsure how to react. See, this is more normal. It's that, oh my god, the... Uh, okay, all right, I know, I, I jumped a little... Like it, it wasn't as bad as it could have been, but it's still... I don't like it, and I don't like it when they set me up for this. Everything's going to be awkward. But they've kind of redeemed it and pulled it back to being normal and not being, oh my god, oh my god! Okay, 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 fair, fair. It's just a touchy subject for me. It drives me bonkers, so I'm, I, I jump the gun sometimes. To be fair, they were heading in that direction, so you can't really fault me for making that assumption. I have to admit, it's nice to wake up to Ryuki by my side like this. Despite our relationship, we weren't living together yet. Both of us were busy with our own work. Oh, well, okay. We often met up for dates and strolled through the streets of Lost York before winding up at his place. Yet I'd only spent a few nights there. The last time had been on his birthday... This was only the second time I'd greeted the morning with him after a passionate night. Okay, so, okay, so again, it sounds like this is only the second time you've had sex with him, right? Or you have sex and then you go home. But it seems like you're new and really you've only, that like, maybe only a few times. So, okay, I can get the, oh, it's slightly awkward because it's still new. Fine, fine. Okay, I'll give you that. Hmm... Suddenly, Ryuki shifted, and his eyes fluttered open. Huh? Good morning, Ryuki. Uh. He blushed a bit, realizing in his arms wrapped around me. Yeah. He didn't pull away, though. 
Instead, his face reddened and he tightened his embrace. It's kind of cute, though. He's like a little embarrassed. All right. M morning. His voice was awkward, just like mine. Did you sleep well? Yeah. Uh, and you? I slept well, too. That's good. Yeah. Um, I wonder what's for breakfast. Probably a Japanese breakfast. I see. I can't wait. Yeah. We held each other as we continued our stiff conversation. The alarm hadn't gone off yet, and we had no concrete plans, so we stayed snuggled under the warm covers, basking in the comfortable silence. See, that's kind of cute. Like, I don't mind this. They're a little awkward. Like, oh, we're both being a little awkward, but instead of like, oh, jumping and running away and freaking out, they're like, we just kind of stayed embraced, and it was really nice, even if it, we both felt a little awkward about it. You know what I mean? Like, this is better. I suppose this is what our mornings will look like once we're married, except for minus the awkwardness, I fucking hope, Jesus. The thought filled me with happiness. Um, have you thought about what kind of wedding you want us to have? Huh? Your parents asked too, didn't they? You mentioned that you hadn't decided anything, but I thought maybe you had some ideas, Ryuki. I know we're way over, but that's because I was rambling a lot and I didn't think this, like, scene was going to go on as long and then I, you know, so whatever. Whatever, you guys don't mind. Well, not really, but... As Ryuki mumbled, he tucked my head under his arm, blocking my view of his face. Let me ask you instead. What kind of wedding do you want? Me? Yeah. I want to hear your thoughts. The wedding I want, huh? The weddings I'd planned at Cupid Core flashed through my mind. But until now, I'd never pictured my own wedding. It was Cupid, after all. I'd only ever been a spectator of love until Ryuki had proposed to me. That was when everything changed. Yeah, okay! Okay, um, we'll stop here on this. What happened? Then I remember this! I guess, wasn't it for a bridal show or something like that? Was that what it was? Like, he designed the dress and it wasn't really a wedding, but everybody... Is that what it was? Like, everyone was like, oh, congratulations! And it was like... Like, everyone thought we got married, and we're like, yeah, we'll just bask in the ambiance a little of it, right? Is that what Cat wasn't it like a... He did, like, a wedding line or something? Like, so... Right? Was that it? Am I miss... I don't know. But I, I remember running through the city and everybody thinking we got married, but we really... But then... I'm, but we really didn't, obviously. Okay. But anyway, I'm gonna stop here. And because this is kind of like a little flashback, but it counts and we'll continue next time. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.